Uh, now I've counted, I've gone through three cycles, three boom and bust crashes, and I'm, you know, uh, for all the OGs in the room, today I tweeted that, you know, starting to feel like a Bitcoin veteran. I, starting, there's still a lot of people that are skeptical about me, but, uh, you know, I will know I will have arrived when the Bitcoin OGs say, I, I guess we're stuck with Sailor from this point forward. This year, no fewer than 10 crypto lenders, exchanges, and projects have failed and negatively impacted the industry. This is in addition to the dozens of failed coins and initial coin offerings that couldn't cope in a highly volatile, highly competitive industry. But outside these smaller coins and tokens, there are bigger projects and institutional holders that could set the industry's growth back by a few years if they were to collapse. One such institutional holder is Michael Saylor's MicroStrategy, the first publicly listed company to hold Bitcoin in its books. It's currently the public company with the largest Bitcoin holding and approximately 130,000 Bitcoin. With the recent downfall of the cryptocurrency exchange FTX, all eyes are now on Sailor. MicroStrategy's $3.98 billion investment in Bitcoin has an unrealized loss of $1.9 billion and is worth around $2.1 billion at current market values. Earlier in the year, the company also took a margin loan of $200 million to buy more Bitcoin. Some people, including Real Vision CEO Raul Paul, believe we are about to see a toppling of MicroStrategy's Bitcoin holdings. But will that actually be the case? Saylor, co-founder and executive chairman of MicroStrategy, has reiterated in a recent interview that he is never giving up on the leading crypto asset. The renowned business executive who recently tweeted that he was feeling like a Bitcoin veteran is definitely in this for the long term. We will now take you to Saylor's interview. Please watch, share, and like this video. Also consider leaving a comment and subscribing to our channel. Well, well first of all, what I want to say is uh, when I came in the class of 2020, all the Bitcoiners from the class of 2014 and the class of 2012 and the class of 2016 used to snicker at me on Twitter behind my back, speculating about when I was going to rage quit or fear quit or throw in the towel you know, and they had like, they were laying odds. Sailor's only going to last another three months. Justine used to like chuckle about whether I would get driven out. I said, you know, Justine, I, I can hear you talking, right? <laughs> uh, on Twitter, everybody can hear you. And then they say, well, the class of 2020, they got it so easy. Yeah, they didn't live through the block size wars or, you know, they didn't live through uh, the difficult times or in the decade. Well, what I have to say to the class of 2022 is you guys have it so easy. Anybody getting into Bitcoin right now has it so easy. You know, as, as for what I think now, look, you know, the, the asset class is seasoned. When, when in 2020, there were a lot of questions. Uh, there were questions about whether or not this was going to be um, embraced by regulators, whether this would be banned. A lot of people, you know, there are a lot of legitimate leaders in the United States who said, this is going to be banned. It's, they would either say it's going to be banned because it's a Ponzi. Uh, they were the deniers. <laughs> or they said, this is going to be banned. Uh, Jamie Dimon said, it's just too good to be true, so it'll be banned. So there were the people that didn't understand it, and, and there were the people that understood it but thought it was too good, and so the government would take it away. And then when the China crackdown took place, everybody said, we see China banned it. And so that proves that it's probably going to get taken away. And here we are in 2022, and what you have is a fight between the chair of the SEC and the chair of the CFTC to see who gets to regulate it or, or who gets to endorse it. And what's become very clear is you've had the head of the CFTC say this is a commodity. You've had the chair of the SEC say this is a commodity. You have had the Secretary of the Treasury, Janet Yellen, recite the legend of Satoshi in a speech at American University, right? Satoshi, a person or persons figured out how to transfer value without a, an intermediary. Um, we now see all the regulators in the Western world have embraced this as an asset class. We've had the chair of the SEC educate the entire working group, the entire cabinet, and most of Congress as the definition of a commodity. An asset 
without an issuer over and over and over again. <clears throat> so the last 24 months have brought, um, have brought mainstream adoption and legitimacy to Bitcoin, and it wasn't there in the middle of 2020. In the middle of 2018 and 2017, we didn't know whether the forks were going to work or if you could fork Bitcoin, and we hadn't settled the basic principle that this was immutable and it should be power to the people and it should not be hijacked by the exchanges or hijacked by everybody that has a decent idea to fix it or improve it. <clears throat> but I think, you know, Len has said this and I've said it too. <clears throat> I think the outcome of the block size wars was really critical to the success of Bitcoin as the world's greatest monetary asset. So if you were around during the block size wars, and if you fought on the right side of the block size wars, then uh, you're really the OG. You guys should give yourself a hand. There's no way that, that I would be here, that, that we would be here, that we would have an avalanche of institutional adoption without the sacrifices that were made during the block size wars and, 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 and without the principled fight. And it was a very principled fight that makes the difference. <clears throat> and today, what you have is you have a, a raft of regulators, you know, that have said a commodity is an asset without an issuer. There is only one digital commodity. There is only one crypto asset network that is lacking an issuer. And that leaves 22,000 other things. And I'm going to quote someone. The vast majority of those other things are securities. And that's politically correct speech for they're all securities. You have a commodity. You have an example set by Satoshi, a principled example. All the other crypto bros that are waiting for clarity and guidance and they want the people at the library that want to understand how you create a commodity. Well, Satoshi showed you how you create a commodity. You have a principled example it's in front of your face. It's been endorsed by every, every thoughtful, principled person of integrity that's studied the space. And so we arrive in the middle of 2022, and the question that we wondered, will this be banned, has been answered. No, this is not being banned. This is being, bra uh, this is being embraced. Will it be hacked? No, it has not been hacked. No one can hack it. And, and in fact, the Bitcoin mining network is approaching 300 exahash. It's the most powerful computer network in the world. It's the most power, powerful crypto network in the world. And when people ask what backs Bitcoin, the answer is a, a crypto hashing network that would require three and a half Earth's worth of energy to 50% attack with conventional cloud computing from the best, the best GPU companies in the world. So we've reached a point where it is embraced, it is not hacked, it is not gonna be hacked, it is backed, and can it be copied? Yeah, it's been copied 20,000 times and they've all failed. And if you wanna copy it, you have a simple, a simple uh, roadmap you just need to have an ethical launch by a founding team that takes no monetary interest in the asset. You need to give it to hundreds of millions of people. You need to back it with 300 exahash and three and a half Earth's worth of, of hash energy. And you need to avoid corrupting it with all of your silly ideas and youthful exuberance and all of your little functional aspirations and all of your other attempts to like accomplish something or do something that you read about last week on a message board. <laughs> and so that's where we are today. Let us know your opinion in the comments. Also, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications. Thanks for watching.